So we're going to present ourselves. I'm Sandra Lane. Uh, I'm here with my two colleagues, Nadia Laurando and Martin Tremblay. We are pedagogical consultants at the Service National du Récit Domaine des Langues. And uh, we wanted just to tell you what we do. Okay, so the Récit is a network of resource persons that are situated across the province. Uh, we are national RECI, so what it means is that we are consultants that works for the development of competencies of uh, students and teachers by the integration of technologies. So we offer webinars, training, uh, we collaborate with the ministry and so on. And you have re, uh, RECI Regional, they, are, they work with the adult sector. And in each school board across the province, you have the RECI Local. So there are consultants in each school board that helps you with um, the integration of technology, I would say, in your classroom. But for now, but now I'm sure they're helping you out with using technology uh, in, um, in uh, remote teaching. So, Martin? Hi, everyone. Uh, so just to... Uh get us started. Uh, I still see some cameras that are on, so whoever's using the Nick uh hello, you can turn off uh, your camera, that's fine, So uh, because that's going to be using the bandwidth. All right, so uh, these are uh, strange times indeed. Uh, just last night, I guess I was a bit nervous uh, before this presentation, so I was dreaming about the presentation, except that it was all done uh, in a physical classroom, so I could actually see you guys for for real so these are uh, strange times indeed and just to get us started uh, we thought we'd start with a cute video sort of a uh, thank you note for being here four plus one is um, how many pints of iced tea are left in the kitchen I'm just scared and I'm so full of my chair. Oh, it's not going good. My mom is getting stressed out. Mom is tired. I, I, So starting just quickly by breathing in. I never thought I'd say this, but I kind of miss school. Teachers, I mean, y'all are gift to people. I thank you so much for what you're doing. Your investment into our children is beyond what we can even imagine. Appreciate all that you do. All right, so that was meant to uh, make us feel uh, better in these hard times. So as you can see, uh, we're uh, back to being uh, essential workers for real. Um, so uh, because we have to, uh, to teach online now, uh, or part of it, or most of it for secondary teachers. We also sent you a survey when we uh, asked you to sign up for this event, uh, and we wanted to better understand who we would be uh, talking to this morning. So uh, here are the results. So the majority of you this morning supposedly come from the uh, secondary level, and we have about 32% that come from the primary level. So we had to take that into consideration when planning our webinar this morning. And then uh, this was the most interesting uh, question for us. We asked you uh, how comfortable you felt with the idea of teaching online. And as you can see, the majority of you are sort of on the fence. So just waiting to see where, where it's going to take you. So, and we have, we do have a lot of uh, teachers. If we can come back to the uh, previous slide, so we do have a lot of teachers who are uh, saying that they don't feel comfortable and about 25% that said that they already feel comfortable. So we had to deal with all of these uh, numbers. So some of you this morning might think, oh, this is not going far enough. And some of you might feel overwhelmed by, by what you're going to see. What's good to remember is that this is our first webinar. So we are going to cover uh, a lot of, well, a lot of ground and then like we just said uh it's going to feel like just a little for some people uh so we're trying to have something for everyone but it is our first one and we only have an hour or maybe even less or we're just going to run late um and 
the, the thing to remember is that there are going to be other ways to reach you. So we're all in the same storm, but we're not all in the same boat. Uh, because we keep hearing, oh yeah, we're all in this uh, and we're all in the same boat. No, we're all in this together. We're all in the same storm, but we're not necessarily all in the same boat. So our our goal, our purpose is to get everyone safely to shore. Don't want everyone, anyone to drown. <laughs> all right, our intentions for today. So we will share strategies and resources to help you thrive in the context of teaching ESL online, mainly by showing dif different teaching systems that exist. We're going to be giving you resources to get started with online teaching that can foster engagement. Uh, and we'll show you some uh, what ESL teaching uh, can look like online. And if we have time, we'll consider other factors of success for online teaching. And of course, if you know us, uh, we will be giving you tons of resources. But if ever you're watching this uh, at another moment or you want to come back to a specific uh, part of this presentation, we uh, build this table of contents and you just need to click on the arrow and it will take you to that part of the presentation that you need to, ac to access. So the main question on everyone's mind is, how do I start? What's out there? And I will let Nadia tell you a bit more about that. So basically, you want to follow one of these models. And the models are uh, asynchronous, synchronous, and hybrid. So let me just quickly go through them. You want to, in, asynchronous means that students engage at their own pace at their uh, in their own time. Synchronous means that you are in class, in cl just like in the class presence, with them, with your students, together. Hybrid means that you have some activities that are uh, at home, that they do from home, and others that they do at their own pace. And this is one that we uh, do uh, a bit more uh, that we suggest. Also, I saw some people that uh, have started taking notes in the collaborative document. So if you look uh, at the bottom right, you have the take notes document again, if you want to access it again, but uh, you can take notes on any, anything that uh, we are presenting or add new information. We, uh, we like hearing from you. So this is the way. So, uh, the main platforms that are available in schools, and you've probably heard about them, are a Google for Education and Office 365. While well, they both offer similar options, and they are, uh, you know, evolving, they're changing uh, their ways to make it even better for teachers. So, uh, for meetings, online meetings, you want to, in this Google for Education suite, you want to use Google Classroom and the uh, Meet, and which is uh, Google Meet is what you are using right now, so it's quite uh, simple to set up. And um, with, t uh, with Office, what you'll use is mostly Teams. Also, to uh, share content with your, t your students, uh, you can use in the Google, uh, Google for Education, you can use all these uh, uh, Google Classroom uh, tools. And in uh, Office 365, it'll be in Teams. There are many people and tutorials and resources out there, and there's wonderful, wonderful Récit Local in each school board that can help you with uh, these tools. We will not go more in detail about them today. Okay? So here, uh, there are other content platforms. We call them, if you see LMS, it's Learning Management System. Uh, they're Moodle, Seesaw, and Schoology, if you want to uh, learn more about them, you can go online and find there's a lot of information. Video conference tools, you have these options too, uh, each with their pros and cons, so you can uh, try them and find them on uh, online too. So just keep in mind that whatever tool that you are using with your students, you want them to feel comfortable and you want also yourself to be comfortable with it. So the best way, um, you know, if you're already using something and that your school board is suggesting something, I su we suggest that you use this system because they'll be able to support you and your colleagues will be able to support you. If you're just starting, 
I uh, we suggest that you take the same ones as your uh, colleagues so that your students don't have multiple logins and they don't have multiple platforms to understand. So. All so, right, I was answering some of the questions there. Uh, uh, so somebody was asking if it wouldn't be more practical for one setup to be used by all ESL teachers. I don't know if it was meant to be all ESL teachers uh, in Quebec, but it's uh, uh, not not uh, necessarily uh, more like what your school is already using, if you can marry with it, or like Nadia said, if you're already using something and your, your students are familiar with those tools, then that's great, but imagine if uh, one teacher is using uh, Google uh, tools and then whoops they have to go in the history class and they're using Microsoft and then the teacher after that is using Schoology and then their final period is with Moodle. Uh, we have to put ourselves in, uh, in their shoes. Um, so how can I teach online uh, successfully? We've got two uh, keywords, so being organized and uh, planning uh, appropriately. So in terms of uh, getting organized and getting ready for a video conferencing, uh, we have two great resources right here uh, that were made by our friends at the uh, Ici Formation à Distance. Uh, so this is how to get ready. Maybe some of you have already tried uh, getting in touch with your, uh, your students. So maybe you're already aware that you shouldn't be uh, filming yourself against the light and then you just look like uh, an, an anonymous video there. Um, so things like that. But there are other, other things to uh, consider and uh, they're right here on uh, these resources. So if you click on them, you'll have access to them. And of course, we encourage you to share the one that was built for students. So you can share that one with your students. Another one that you can share with your students is the best practices for, uh, for students. Um, so mainly that it doesn't mean that because you're learning from home that you just you should just turn on your computer and try to jump in. You need to set up your your workspace, uh, your environment, but also uh, your mind. You need to be uh, to be ready. If uh, if some if some of you have tried working from home with kids around or with things disturbing you around, it doesn't work that well. So uh, that's another great resource that you can share with your uh, your students. So that too, you can just download and share it with your students. One of the great things you can do also is maybe even before you try to start uh, teaching uh, ESL is to go with these resources and take the time to really uh, make sure that the students understand them. Nadia, did, did you want to add something? Or? Yes, I would like to show you a document that we have created, and this would help you. We've presented it to many, uh, to many school boards, but uh, this is available online. It's called a routine document where you can put everything in one document, right? This one that you're seeing is a one that was created for primary, but we are working on a secondary uh, routine document to help you. You can put uh, things like strategies and menu and that will help structure your uh, online meeting with your students. And also it could be a place where students refer to when you want to share information. So this, you will have access to the document. If you click on the link, it'll ask you to make a copy. So you keep a copy for yourself and then you use it. It's yours. All right, somebody was asking if there's going to be a French version of this webinar. No, this is for ESL teachers. Uh, we are going to, that. There, there are many webinars going on uh, with the RECI uh, right now for, for yourself or for your colleagues that uh, can only speak French. Um, so yes, so Nadia was uh, going over one of the best uh, practices. Don't forget to turn off your uh, microphone, uh, Nadia. Um, so other best practices for uh, teachers. So to develop a routine, the document she showed you, of course, uh, uh, if you've already seen her um, the, the, the workshop about trolley teachers, so you know it's more, uh, um, uh, with uh, for for primary teachers, but we are going to build something for uh, secondary teachers as well because developing a routine online is going to be uh, very important for for students, secondary students. Uh, the mindset that's right now is that the students who are going to come back to uh, the the virtual class or online classes are mainly the ones that uh, wanted to pass or that were um, in in danger of not. Uh, 
uh, completing their, their year successfully. Uh, so you can imagine already the, the level of uh, anxiety for, for these students. So if they come into your class and they already know for each and every class, this is how it's going to go down, then that can really help them uh, lower that anxiety. And for you as well, because you know that uh, you'll know how much you can fit into the time that's allowed for that online class. Um, another thing is to make sure that the expectations are very clear, visible to your, your students, what you're going to do, but also why you're going to do it and what you're supposed to be learning from, from that. That uh, for, for those of you who are using Teams, for example, that can be uh, in, in the plan for the meeting. So it really needs to be visible throughout your, your class. Um, you should plan short and focused lessons. Uh, those of you who went to, to see what was on with uh, Tele-Quebec there, you saw that they were very short clips going straight to the point. And then, of course, we can just imagine ourselves if we had something like that in English, then that we would be uh, having our activities right after that. But um, it's impossible to think that you're going to be speaking for 30 minutes and that they're still going to be uh, uh, listening to you because their attention span, you already know it from the, the classroom, but at least you're getting some, some signals, some visual signals when you're in your class. But right now, I mean, behind your screen, some of you are maybe checking emails, some of you are maybe answering texts, you know who you are. All right, <laughs> so you can just imagine students at home. So you need to make it short, focused, and um, last but not least, keep them engaged. And we'll show you how to do this uh, in a second. All right, so you, you need to keep them engaged throughout the learning activities when you meet them online. And of course, provide feedback and keep in touch with them as much as possible. We know that it's going to be very demanding already, but you want to be able to keep uh, in touch with your students and provide feedback. There are ways to give automatic feedback with some of these activities that we're going to show you. If you have other ideas or things that you're already doing in class, please uh, do write it in the, uh, in the take notes uh, document that's right there. So in the, our collaborative uh, document. We may Not skip to them. Yes. There's a question uh, uh, from Milan. I think it's important to address this one. So principals are planning one hour long online teaching period. Do I understand this is go a good idea? So, yeah. Okay. I, so by, by teaching period, it doesn't mean that you're going to be speaking for an hour. It means that this would be your, your one hour class. All right. Uh, so I, I guess, uh, a lot of you are still going to follow the same schedule. I'm thinking secondary here uh, because it's not going to be possible for four subject matters to try to meet their students at the same time. So probably they'll be following the same schedule that they were having. But when they're saying that you, you would have a teaching period of one hour, it doesn't mean one hour where you're, you're teaching, meaning that you, you are talking. So it's you're, part of that hour is that you're going to be speaking to them, but most of that hour will be activities where they're engaged. And we'll show you a, in a second how that's done. Does that answer the question? All right. So of course, uh, the, the best way to do this, uh, Paralovo, your, your camera is on, by the way, if you want to turn it off. Um, so the best way to, uh, to achieve this is to, uh, to, to come up with a, a good plan. And we're, we're giving you um, a planning tool. And I, I can already hear a lot of you saying, well, I, I know how to plan my class. Yes. But the thing is, uh, what you're doing in a physical class won't necessarily be uh, you won't be able to redo the same thing in the same way that you were doing it uh, online. OK, so that's really important to grasp because some 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 people might think, oh, OK, so I was uh, at this chapter in that book and I was going to teach about this and they were going to do that. And that's not necessarily going to work out the, the way you want to, because like we said, it needs to be shorter on the attention span. Um, so that's why we, we provided you with this planning. Another thing uh, with the, the planning is that 
you would be sharing it with uh, students, parents, and so on. Because if we think about also in September, if we're going to be going in and on and off, uh, like going to school and then whoops, going back online, well, or some students have to be absent for whatever reason for, for a long time, well, what are they supposed to do? What, where are they supposed to be? They can always go back to that plan. So we found a plan uh, from Julie Stern that was really simple. Uh, we adapted it, of course, for our, our program here in Quebec. So you can adapt it and follow uh, this recipe. I won't go through it because I think it's pretty self-explanatory. So you can, um, you can go through it by, by yourselves. And there's also a student version of it so that you can just uh, copy paste some of the things that's on your plan and give it to your students. That way they, all, they always know what they need to learn, not just what they need to do, all right? And the tools that they're going to use and so on. So they know where they're going and how to get there and why they're going there. Yes, it is good for all levels uh, because you, you'll see I even put the links for the primary and um, secondary uh, levels. Uh, thank you, Mary Christine. Um, so the, uh, the the next big question, of course, if you have tried uh, getting in touch with your students, and I know that some of you were like disappointed because you say, okay, I'm trying to get in touch with them or I'm trying to give them the truth and I, don't get a lot of comeback from my students. Of course, uh, once they were told that, oh, everything was off, then a lot of them said, okay, I'm off, I'm off. But And now they're being told that they got to go back to it. So we hope that they're, they're going to get back to it, come back to this uh, online school. But we have to remember that even if it's not, nothing's going to be perfect to start with. But um, from now until June, this is going to give us a lot of chance to practice so that if the situation goes on later or it comes back at a later time, we will be able to use these, uh, these strategies again. So how to teach ESL in an online context and keep students engaged? So the number one rule is make sure that students are active participants. In other words, don't do like what we're doing right now. Okay, but we'll show you, this is a webinar. So of course it's not meant to be a 200% interactive, but we will ask some participation in a second. And the next thing is make sure your students will practice or apply the skill within a short delay in a meaningful context. So whatever you're teaching, they should be reusing very quickly because you're also going to be checking for their understanding of the concepts that you have taught, taught. okay? So that means uh, that you're going to focus on planning your learning outcomes more than planning a series of activities. So again, not just do, 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 but what we're supposed to learn from this. Um, and you, you're going to make sure that the students are clearly aware of these outcomes, okay? You need to combine audio instructions and visual schematics. So not just uh, you speaking in front of the camera, you need to come up with uh, some images as well. But a good trick here sometimes is also to ask students to come up with the visuals. That's a great way to see if they understood or the way they understood. So they, they'll show you visually how they understood what you were teaching. Uh, verify uh, understanding frequently and to foster collaboration and group learning because it's a lot harder to quit on your colleagues than it is to quit on the teacher. So imagine if uh, they know that they're playing a part in the overall text from a group, well, it's harder to not just quit on your friends like that than if it's just one text per student, for example. If you have any uh, other ideas or things that you're already doing in class, you can always put it in the collaborative uh, document. So, Nancy. <laughs> so, you may ask, and I see it in the chat. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to go and look at the questions, yes. How do we keep our students engaged and how, and you know, uh, how do we put the, keep them and put them in action? So we have chosen uh, about uh, chosen some tools to present to you that you could actually use with your students um, in presence or uh, after or um, synchronous or asynchronous or hybrid. So I will, we will start with creating videos or content for teaching. Um, so remember that you can take notes, just a reminder. 
What, uh, if you want to create content for your students, you can use these tools. We won't go in details uh, about uh, for these tools, but you can access uh, tutorials for all of them. Uh, Adobe Spark Video is to create videos. Screencastify and Loom are more for screencast, which is recording your screen and what is happening. So you can create tutorials, you can give feedback, you can explain a task, um, so or explain a notion and then share it with your students so they can watch it anytime or as many times as they need to. So people are wondering, how do we get our students to interact? Well, because interacting is, uh, you know, the most important part of our program. So we do suggest scheduling appointments for smaller groups. Uh, all the platforms that we are, or choose a platform that can uh, use that. Um, here, uh, you can create channels and uh, group meetings in both. Uh, you can use the channels for breakout rooms. Um, uh, and by having small groups or maybe uh, having maybe for the full hour, you have them work together for 15 minutes, but the rest, they have something else to do. So they're still doing an hour class, but they're not with you for the full hour. So uh, by having smaller groups, by giving them functional language, everything they need, uh, you can uh, have them talk between each other. And the site gives you suggestions. Also, you can record their conversations. So that's another option. So you can also uh, suggest your students to um, create something with what they've learned. So you give them the option. So what we did is on the website, distance teaching tools for ESL teachers, we have um, uh, chosen a, um, a few of the tools that can be used. This will be updated because we have so much to say. Uh, we want to be able to um, uh, show you uh, so, many, so many things and uh, it, they all have different intentions, right? I'm going to show you here the website quickly so you can understand how it works so we have here the home page with uh, suggestions of sites to help you and also uh, if we look at creation presentation here you have the tools that are suggested so you give a choice to your students or you could even create yourself a book uh, a video or a comic strip or a, uh, a comic strip or a poster to share with your students to start uh, uh, to spark a discussion so uh, this is what can be done with things on the website so uh, we'll Okay, so that's it for me. Yes, so um, are you ready to try out some uh, things? Uh, I know that you have a lot of questions, so I see, can you give examples of what we can do grade one, grade two, or cycle one? So yes, it's a first uh, webinar. So later on, we could uh, maybe um, give you other webinars or other ideas on focused uh, topics. So I think with uh, Quizlet, this could be a good uh, uh, activity for them. So I don't know if you know Quizlet. It's, it's really a, a great tool that creates association games with terms. So it could be uh, uh, flashcards, so uh, uh, vocabulary with a word or a definition with a word. And what is great about Quizlet, so I'm going to give you an example. So I will click here. It will give you access to a folder with a grade three a flashcard uh, the, with the different topics. So let's say that I, I will show you the daily routine one. So here, once I have a set of flashcards, so you see all the flashcards are there. So once I have a set of flashcards, I have access to a variety of, um, of ways to learn these words and some games, okay? So if I click on flashcard, this is an example, maybe not this one. Wanted to show you this one. Sandra, maybe try again to present because we don't see your screen, your presentation oh. screen. Okay. 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 I'm going to do it again. Sorry about that. There you go. Mm. Do you see it now? Yes, it's uploading. Okay, good. 
Okay, so let's say now that I have, um, uh, this is an example of flashcard. So if I click here, do you hear the uh, audio? Eat breakfast. Okay, so I also have the audio. So we mentioned that what is important when we, um, we uh, teach online is use images and audio. So this is a great way. And uh, yes, the echo is due to the presentation. I'm sorry about that. So this is an example. So it's really easy to create. You can also invite your students in class and even have a follow of your students. So they could do it offline and you can follow where they're at. But also what a great way to engage students is live in your classroom. We're gonna play a game and we're gonna test it out with uh, a lot of you. So it's the first time that we test with so many uh, uh, people. So uh, we're gonna play a Quizlet live. So have you already played a Quizlet Live? Maybe if you can chat and tell us uh, if you know what it is. Nope, okay. So once you have a set of flashcards, you can, it creates, like I mentioned, different association games. And now we're gonna test out uh, Quizlet Live. So it means that they're gonna use the vocabulary words that students learned or uh, definitions and so on and create a game in class just to engage them. Yes, you need to create an account. So um, now I will select individual if I'm in a, 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 a synchronous mode and I will choose this kind of game. So you have here, if you can access and you're, you're comfortable using another window or another device. So we asked you to use another, to uh, bring another device with you to play those games. So if you access, so you need to type quizlet.live and this access code. Good, six players already. So they're gonna ask you to type quizlet.live, type in the code, then enter your name. So once I have a, a Good, so you're quick, it's going well. <laughs> well, that's a party right there, Sandra. <laughs> hey, I'm so happy that it's going well. It's the first time that we test this uh, with a lot of people, so. So for the secondary teachers, just as people are signing in, so you'll see that the, the example that we're going to do right now is more vocabulary oriented, more primary oriented, but secondary, you could just as easily do associations between characters of a book and their picture, or characters of a book and their description. So lots of things that you can get uh, like that or even you could have literary devices and their definition. So we know that you'll find great ways to adapt this material. And yes, you don't have any uh, questions yet because I didn't start the game, okay? So I'm just waiting maybe a minute. I have 117 players. I think I can start the game now. So uh, still joining in because I yeah, want if, if you're not in, then don't be sad, you know, you can try it afterwards. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to start the game now. And uh, for those of you who can't uh, sign in, I will just join the game too, just to show you what it does. Okay, and then I will start the game. So be uh, patient with me. We're trying this for the first time. There you go, Sandra. And um, they make it better all the time. This uh, was not as easy before. They make it that all the tools easier and user-friendly for teachers and students. Yeah, yeah, that's so such a good game. point. And you see all your names are there. I'm going to start the game now. And for those of you who can't sign in, I will uh, share my screen so you can see how it goes. So here, OK, let's get up. To watch shows, to watch TV. I'm getting, I'm going to win. <laughs> this is fun. <laughs> I was tired of losing yesterday, so I'm not playing. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
we have a winner. We have a winner. So we have uh, Josiane, okay, who won the game. Uh, but the idea here is really, uh, <laughs> she's happy. The idea here is to show you what is great about uh, Quizlet Live is that you can have uh, stats, okay? So then you can do some teaching. So, you know, what, what we know, so the terms that we know. And after that, we can also see uh, what was uh, frequently mistaken, you know, the terms that aren't understood. So then you can review uh, specific things with students, okay? So this is an example with uh, Quizlet Live. And uh, in the case of students on their device, they can't, you cannot finish the game. Ah, oh, yeah, because uh, yep. probably because there's someone won, okay? <laughs> So oh, yes, man, you're right. Yeah, you got bitten by a dinosaur. <laughs> so uh, what I was going to say is uh, that students they receive their own feedback also. So you can give them the time to look at their mistake. So they finish the game, they can look at the mistakes, and then we can do some teaching with that. Oh, and one thing is that right now they did play with the live but they've practiced before so they did study and learn it's just that this is the kind of a, a game uh, that's it no they, they do not need two devices to play that they can simply open a new tab in their um on their computer so it's possible just to but they need to know how to navigate in between uh, different windows and it's possible also to send the link let's say you're working in Google Classroom or in Teams, it's possible to send the link directly in their environment with the code. So they just click on the link there. So there are ways to organize it. But like, so, we, mentioned, like we mentioned, uh, it's really an overview. So if we wanna go further with that, um, uh, we can give you workshops on specific things, okay? So it doesn't take long to set up and in Quizlet in the environment, I, I'm gonna just finish quickly with that because we have a lot of uh, other things to see. Uh, if I go back to uh, exit game, if I'm in Quizlet, if you click on the search tool, you can find already pre-made sets of flashcards. So you don't need to uh, create everything. There's a lot of things that exist out there, okay? So and, I, and of course, one of the, the things that you need to do is to do like we just did right now. You try it with your students just for fun. Don't don't put all your chips. Don't be all in for the first time that you're going to do this and say this is this is it. This is the activity. No, you try one for fun. The students understand the mechanics and then they can try out the one that you spend time uh, creating. No, they don't need to device at home. Like I mentioned, they could use the computer and really navigate through a window and open two windows at a time, okay? So um, if I continue, there's another example. You know, in ESL, we use a lot of videos. So video is a text. So we wanted to show you an example of a video that has been edited in Edpuzzle. So I don't know if you know Edpuzzle. We really like this, uh, this tool because it lets, lets you uh, take any video from YouTube, Khan Academy, TED Talks, and so on, and edit the video so you can insert questions. So what is great with it is that students can watch videos at home without being in class live. And if they're connected to your uh, teacher's account, um, they will answer the questions and you will have all the information. So all the, you will collect the data. So what is interesting with that is that you don't need to um, teach everything. So you just come back and uh, review the things that weren't understood uh, by students, okay? So now uh, we're gonna do uh, an example that what we could do live. Uh, this activity was meant uh, for, um, for, for a, a C1 setting, but we're gonna test it out uh, using the chat box, okay? So it's an infer and predict activity. I'm gonna show you only the three first question because I think you're gonna get the idea uh, with that one. It's a video in Thai, but the idea is really to predict and infer. So we can also infer uh, using the, the visual cues, okay? So here we go. 
I'm gonna just uh, just uh, if if my instructions are not clear, when the uh, the video stops, there will be a question, and I will ask you to uh, answer using the chat. Okay. Okay, so the question is why is this boy's head down? So A, he doesn't want the woman to recognize him. B, he doesn't want the man to punish him. And C, he is ashamed because he got caught stealing. Oh, you're good. His neck hurts and he stole some medicine. So what is great, we see everyone, you know, answering uh, questions. So you can have an idea of if students are following, okay? Good. <laughs> so let's move on so you get the idea. Okay, so why did the man give money to the woman? Why do you think he did that? to pay for the medicine yeah, good of course this is a more high school example but the same thing can be done with younger ones or with uh, different kinds of video okay with songs rhymes and so on with stories what's interesting we can see that uh, the more people can read other people's answers the uh, more complex they become sometimes yeah so let's move on to the next part, the last question. Okay, last question. What is the relationship between the man and the little girl? Which visual clues makes you say that? And if you can't answer, we can rewatch only that sequence. Good. Okay, so she's the daughter. Good. Father, daughter. Someone is asking, where's the video? Uh, it's supposed to appear on your screen. And if you have access to the presentation, you can click on the link that is uh, below the, uh, the, um, the, uh, the image. Wow, good. good. I was going to answer uh, Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> In Thailand, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, I thought uh, maybe it's that. I, I, I'm not sure what it's <laughs> It's my interpretation of the question. So. Oh, okay, okay. My I, I thought that the person meant, where's that? That's in Thailand. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, yes, so many questions at Puzzle can be used on Teams. So the, the idea is you can share the video that you was edited in at Puzzle in Teams, but collecting the information of students will be done in at Puzzle. Okay. And I'll just mention, Sandra, that if you look at the bottom on many of these tools, we have a work, uh, an online course. So we have created tutorials and examples for you to look at to help you use those tools. So we're right now we're going uh, in general to show you how you could use it online, but there's a lot more information at the on the click here link to access the resources. Yeah. So we're going to move on to our last um, example with interaction. Um, so uh, it's uh, using quiz tools. I'm sure you've seen a lot of those quiz tools. I saw that uh, you mentioned that you know Kahoot. Uh, quizzes is uh, similar to Kahoot, so it's kind of a game-based uh, quiz that can engage students and check for quickly for understanding. Uh, and there's also uh, with your uh, Google Suite and with uh, Office, there is Google Forms and Office Forms that can uh, um, that you can use to uh, verify understanding, to predict, and so on. And with the, these two um, tools, you can also include feedback and autocorrect. So it's a great way to quickly. Uh, grasp and have information about uh, uh, your students' um, uh, 
to, to have uh, information about your students. Uh, uh, if I don't have the term, uh, Martin, can you help me? Your students' uh, success or uh, what? I, the I, I was answering questions. Can uh, you repeat that? Uh, but that's okay. I was looking for a word, but I think okay. you, you're 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 getting me with that. Yes. The yes. progress. Thank you. Improvements. Progress. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was answering questions. No, that's okay. That's okay. It happens. You know, you have a lot of, I, we have a lot of uh, things in our, uh, in our head. So anything, uh, uh, one last thing that we want to do with you is really think about, we're going to use Mentimeter. So Mentimeter is another kind of a, a quiz tool, but also uh, uh, we like to use it as a reflection tool because we can use a, a kind of collaborative word cloud. Um, so we're going to um, ask you to go on menti.com and type in this uh, code, OK? So same thing. So open a new tab or use your device, menti.com. And the question is, Name three things that you find the most important in remote teaching, okay? So the code is on the top here, so menti.com, okay? So if you think about what we talked about today uh, or you've been experiencing, what do you think are the three things the most important when you get started, really? Great, so planning, yes, planning, visual support, patience, yes, it will take a lot of patience, a lot of adaptation to that situation. Routine, yes. Yes. Keep it short. And, yep. Oh, it's great. I know uh, some of you have to leave because it's 1030 and you may, but we do have a, a, a form that we would like you to complete to help us plan for the Q&A and we have more information. So maybe a few minutes. Or make sure that you go down till the end of the, to the end of the presentation on your own time yeah. to access. So it's a great way quickly to uh, ask students, let's say, uh, uh, what are the things that you, uh, that you understood about this lesson or things that you, uh, you, um, you want to work on or things that you're struggling with or just to review vocabulary. Yes, it's possible to rewatch yes. the presentation later on. We're almost done because we started like a five minutes left. We have five minutes, five, seven minutes left, okay? Yeah, we started 10 minutes later. Yes, yeah. that's it. So I hope for those who are leaving uh, that you enjoyed it, it was helpful. And uh, yes, you have to have an account to access Mentimeter. They all require accounts. So for the yes, of course you need to choose the tool that will be uh, the most um, um, Useful, user-friendly. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So you need an account for the teacher. The students join by entering codes, but they don't all need accounts for all the, uh, the tools. Yeah. So thank you for that. It's really interesting. We, we, we see the uh, elements that are really important for you. Okay. So if we move on to uh, the, con we're going to continue the, the presentation and finish. No, they are free tools. For the simpler version, we ha you have enough information on the, sim the free versions of these tools. Yeah, that's it. So, of course, we remember that we have a Q&A session this Friday. You have a form here that you, we ask you to complete because we want to be prepared <laughs> to answer questions. So we have uh, we can answer quickly, but sometimes we need some preparation. So if you use this form, we will be able to be better prepared and answer your question. Yes, of course, we can, we can give you some tips and tutorials on how to use some tools. Remember, you have an online course on, on Campus Reci that we 
we uh, we have that you can also follow the different tutorials um, and we will also collect all the information and maybe uh, let's say uh, I'm, I'm giving just an example not saying that it will necessarily happen but let's say that you need something on setting up a role interaction online we can do something about it okay uh, then if you need help, we have, there's a lot of links there. So you have our site that we uh, uh, that we built for you. You have Campus Rissi, you have online webinars, you have your local Rissi, your CPs are amazing. I know they've been working hard uh, planning with you guys. And there's also the uh, Jean-Seigne à Distance de Teluc that is a, a free uh, online course on distance teaching. It's a 20 it's hour It's starting, course. yeah. It's starting right now. Just a little uh, note uh, there, uh, Sandra, on the questions for Friday. We yes. won't be answering specific questions on how to use Teams or how to use Google. So if you're asking us, uh, how do I uh, create a mailing list for, for Teams or something like that, we won't be answering these kinds of questions because there are tons of tutorials out there uh, for Microsoft, for Google. So it's going to be specifically for remote teaching and ESL. Yes. 